The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Jason Castleman of the Canola Council of Canada and we've been talking about soil sampling and soil sampling in canola particularly. So why don't you just kind of go into a little bit of what kind of soil sampling is currently being done on average and what direction you see the need going? Yeah, you bet. So, you know, in the for the most part in the past we've been doing a lot of uh, composite soil sampling where we're taking a sample from the whole field and putting it into uh, into the bucket mm -hmm. and then taking a, a sample of that of that bucket and sending it to the lab you know and for the most part I, I think you know we we started doing random sampling but with the advent of, of being able to, to use GPS coordinates we were we were pinpointing taking those samples from the same same spots in the field but still doing a composite sample but one of the things that we're starting to, to see with growers is that those that are doing more intensive soil sampling. So instead of mixing all of that into the bucket and sending it to the lab, they're actually taking a, a sample from that spot. And it's going to be an, a, you know, a few cores in that spot. So stop the truck, jump out, take, take a spot from each, each uh, side of the, of the truck and use that as your sample and send it to the lab. So instead of having one composite sample that's got 16 cores in the bucket, we would actually have 16 samples from that from that quarter section. And then you're GPS mapping that area out so that you know exactly where that was taken from, right? Yeah, because then what that gives us the opportunity is is to uh, uh, correlate that to yield. Mm -hmm. So if we've got a, a, a soil sample point and we've got a yield point, we can actually see is is there something about that that part of the field that's either contributing to yield or is it something in that soil sample that's going to identify a uh, limiting factor to uh, to our yield potential because we know the whole field got the same amount of water right. the whole field got the same amount of sunshine but what is the difference in that soil and it, and there are factors obviously there's going to be compaction there's going to be drainage there's going to be you know a whole other list of things but is if we can find out if if it is a soil fertility issue do we have the opportunity to fix it or how do we manage uh, something that we've measured? Because you were saying that the target yield is 52 bushels per acre, typically, right? As you guys have gone out and done samples like this, are you seeing that it makes a really big difference from a production standpoint? Yeah, so what we're seeing, you know, a farmer is gonna pick that yield target and, and whether it's 52 bushels or, or more or less, he's gonna have that number uh, of, what that, of what that yield target is going to be. But what we've seen is that when you start looking at combine yield data, there is a tremendous amount of variation in the field. And so we've got parts of that field that, you know, we've, we've on average, we've said we wanted to get 52 bushels to the acre, but we're getting 60, mm. but we might only be getting 35. And with that uh, fertility that we've applied, but if we can pinpoint or find out why is that part of the field yielding 60 and why is part of that field only running at 35, Right. And is it a fertility issue? And can we start to, to improve, improve some of that uh, base fertility that's in that soil with a balanced fertility program? So we're, we're feeding the crop to, based on yield target, but parts of that field are going to have a lot higher yield target than, than just an average number. Than others. And then how many samples would you recommend growers take throughout the course of a field? Like so that's where the balance of time and money comes into play. And so if we have a, uh, if we can, if we can take at least 16 spots on a quarter, that's one for 10 acres. You know, that's, that's within the budget for, for some growers, uh, in, for the most part. Um, you could, ideally it would be awesome to take uh, one sample for every acre, right. but you know, logistically and money wise, it, there is a limit on, on what it takes. And you don't have to do all your fields mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the more intensive soil sampling could be done on a couple of fields to, to identify some of the, the challenges, identify some opportunities. Uh, if it's land that you own, you, you know, you, and you want to make the investment of improving the fertility, there's, there's an opportunity to, to try to build up some of that. If it's land that you're renting, you have a different strategy of, of how you're going to manage fertility on that farm. For sure. And then is there a certain time of year or times in the year that producers should be going out in soil sampling? 
Yeah, I think for the most part, af after the crop comes off, after harvest time is uh, is generally a, a good a good time to take soil samples. Um, generally, it you know as the soil cools down, we we have a um, lower amount of uh, biology active in the soil, so some of those nutrients uh, like nitrogen that are going to be change based on the biology of the soil, they start to slow down and, and stabilize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so in the fall is a good time, but you know for uh, growers any time of the year if they're out taking some soil samples uh, to me it's it's always going to give you the, a little extra information or a little bit more value and uh, and that could be another opportunity too is is taking samples throughout the growing season um, and seeing how do those levels change or how does it uh, you know impact how your crop is growing so but for the standard practice I think taking a sample in, in the, the fall. fall after harvest is and then you were talking about the nutrient ratios as well so can you go into that a little bit for our listeners yeah so what we've seen that growers that are kind of um, correlating that, that um, soil sample data point plus a, a yield point in that, uh, in that where that sample was taken and they're trying to figure out what is actually contributing to yield. Uh, some of the growers are, are starting to see that there's an interaction between the uh, uh, ratio of phosphorus to zinc or phosphorus to copper. Um, you know, or maybe even a, a potassium to magnesium ratio. So we know that there are some interactions there. And, um, you know, if we've got that in the right balance or the right ratio, does that actually impact yield? And can we, can we see that with, uh, when we've got um, uh, yield numbers and soil sample numbers together? Right. And so is there, are there more studies being done on that, on the correct ratios? Because I think a lot of the time you think, okay, well, we need this nutrient in there and it's kind of flat, right? So... Yeah, are there studies being done on those ratios and what works best for canola? Yeah, I think, you know, in canola right now with fertility uh, studies on that, it's, it's probably something that, that is a bit of an opportunity for growers to do research on their own. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's, um, it's, it's something that, uh, that growers can, you know, if they've got yield information from that, from that combined yield monitor data that they might have sitting there they've collected all this data what do you do with it right why not start map putting Mapping layers out of, and seeing what's layers there. of maps together so mm -hmm. if we've got a yield map and a, and a soil sample map and and put them together and what what is it actually showing us or what can you start to learn from what's happening in the field uh, one thing that we didn't mention is the um, the opportunity of using satellite imagery uh, to, to look at that variability uh, across the field and that can almost be a, a, a yield prediction map based on satellite imagery because you know where those uh, good spots are versus some of the, the spots that might need more attention. Right, and do you know where growers can go to get satellite images of their farms? A lot of, a lot of uh, companies provide satellite imagery for a fee mm -hmm. or um, you know, working with an agronomist who has subscription to, uh, to satellite imagery services. And uh, it's, it's super cheap. You, you, can, you can buy satellite imagery, uh, daily satellite imagery now for uh, across Western Canada. And uh, so, you know, finding it for your field and, and digging into to what is actually showing up before the combine hits the field is, is a really nice way of, of managing, you know, some of the variability that we're seeing, but also to uh, improve, improve areas of the farm that, that might need it. Right, that's incredible. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Real Agriculture. And that was Jason Castleman.